Hello, hello, hello. This is Prophetess Tay Janice. I'm here with another prophetic word from the Lord thy God. Before anything, you must seek the Lord by using your discernment spirit. You must also discern the voice of God by testing. You may discern what the will of God is for you to be sure this prophecy is indeed for you. Holy Spirit, right now in the name of Jesus, we welcome you in with thanksgiving in our hearts. God, I ask and pray that it be none of me and all of you. God, I ask right now, God, that you do that thing that you do, Lord God. When you step into the room and you cause change to break free, miracles to take place right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask and pray that you touch my sister and brother in Christ that's watching this video, Lord God. And I ask that you pour into them, Lord God, your love, your fruits of the Spirit right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, I ask right now, Father God, that if there's someone that's in, in lack and that they're in need, that you meet every household need, Father God. God, you know all that we need, and I ask that you do it in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, so I'm here with another prophetic word from the Lord on today. If you are new here, welcome. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Amen. I am constantly praying for each and every one of you guys. And if God has allowed you to come back, amen, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because as the Lord downloads to me, I'm going to upload to you what the Lord is giving me to give to you. Amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and it arrested me so heavy to allow me to allow you to know that you can only go but so far if you do not obey God. You can only go so far if you do not obey God. I have learned that obedience is better than a sacrifice and sometimes the sacrifice is the obedience. I wish I had some help. You can only go but so far if you do not obey God. So there's a lot of you who have been wanting your kingdom spouses to return. It's a lot of you who are wanting new love and, 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 and waiting on God to send you that you know person that he has for you you're currently waiting but i want you to know while you're in your waiting or if god has allowed you to come back into a reconnection with your kingdom spouse that you can only go but so far if you do not obey god because you don't want to get to a point to where you get to the promise and you can't get over because you did not obey. You allowed the things from the past, your past actions, your past behaviors, the past things you said come back up again. And you revisit those things again in a matter to where it calls you to be set back. You didn't work this hard or you didn't come this far for nothing. So you have to make sure that you are choosing and making your decisions wisely because yes the scripture tells us that if we seek ye the kingdom of god first and his righteousness everything will be added to you but if you do not obey the word of god those very things that's added to you can be taken because at the end of the day you have to obey what the lord is telling you because you cannot go any further you cannot build anything to last you cannot make anything work together if you are not in obedience it's the moment you step into obedience, the moment you decide that I'm going to build in obedience, I'm going to have faith in what the Lord is saying. I'm not going to just quote scriptures. I'm not going to just memorize scriptures because some people that even if they know the scripture, they don't understand what it means. And even if they memorize it, they don't always follow through with what the scripture says. But when you obey the word of God and you build it to make sure you're building it in the word, you're building it off obedience. God can bless you in any storm that you may be in. You'll be able to wither that storm. You'll be able to stand even in the storm. So your kingdom spouse is at a place in his life to where he knows that it's bigger than his feelings. He's, he, he's aware that, hey, 
I'm prepared. I am very well prepared for any storm that's going to come up because I realize that no matter what I'm going through, no matter what we face, if we have faith that if God brought us to it, he's going to see us through it. Who am I talking to on today? He knows how to have the foundation set, right? And we already know about the foundation part of it all. Because even though that's something that people don't see at all, people don't see the foundation that's underneath the house. But if it all falls, you will see where those things went wrong at without that strong foundation. And the foundation is based off of the word of God. When you're building something, you have to be sure that when you build it, it's built on the word of God. It has to be so. Because if not, when you find yourself in tough situations, when you find yourself inside of a storm, such as financial hardship, emotional availability, right? If you find yourself in certain storms, you're not going to know how to take or handle and build and, and, and make sure that thing is standing correctly if it doesn't have the obedience of the word of God. You have to follow the plan of God. You have to learn that the only way that things will stand and happen in your life is if God is in the midst of it all. To be in the mindset of obeying. Again, obedience is better than a sacrifice and sometimes the sacrifice is the obedience. Now, I want to give you the first scripture that, you know, God had gave to me to give to you. So we're going to be in James chapter one, beginning at the 22nd verse. You guys know I'm in the easy version. It says, but be careful to do what God says in his message. Do not only listen to it. Do not make that mistake. So verse 23, you must obey God's message. Do not be like a man who quickly looks at his face in the mirror. That man looks at himself but then he goes away. He immediately forgets what he is really like. So do not just listen to God's message and then forget it. It is a completely good message that makes people free. Look at it carefully and keep it in your mind. Do what it tells you to do. God will bless anyone who lives in it that way. So it's possible that you can get to the promise and quickly forget. And then you find yourself in a place to where, dang, I'm back in the same spot again. So the Lord doesn't want you to just be a hearer of the word. He wants you to be a doer of the word. Don't just hear what I'm telling you. And then by the time I allow you to get to the promise, by the time I let you rekindle with that relationship, by the time I allow you to have that kingdom spouse back and you guys are coming towards something, wondering if things will work out, wondering if, you know, where things will go. Don't fall inside of sin because after the sin comes confusion. I just want you to know that sometimes people don't understand that when you sin, the confusion comes in. And then in that confusion, your mind is twisted, right? Because you're all in your mind about certain things. And I told you that the first thing that the enemy attacks on a man is his mind. So he can't seem to have his mind in a place to where he can build with you because he's in his mind because the sin has taken place based off the confusion, whether it's you guys having sex, whether it's you guys going back to the old patterns and behaviors, whether it's you guys not still waiting on God and you just moving ahead and, and, and forcing things to happen. No, no, you can't do that. You have to, you have to be willing to obey the word of God. That sin is when you do what you want to do instead of doing what God told you to do. You can't just do what you want to do and expect to lay hold of the promise because you don't want to get to the promise and not be able to go to the other side. You don't want to get to the promise and not be able to enjoy the promise. You don't want to get to the promise and, and still go in with the same mindset of thinking that, okay, now I got here. Is it going to work? Is it going to last? It's not going to be made to last if you're not laying hold of the promise the way God has already instructed you to do so. So don't you quickly forget what the word of God has told you to do already. Who am I talking to? 
The only way that you can have something solid, to have something in Christ that's going to last like it needs to, is if you follow the obedience of the Lord. There could be a storm that's happening, or there could be a situation that we are going through, but if you don't take consideration and you get caught up in only being with that person, you know, when the times are good and, you know, um, things are going well, or if that's the only time you know how to be with somebody and, 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 and make something work is when times are good, then you are sadly mistaken. Because if you're going to build that foundation, if you're going to build that marriage, if you're going to build and have that relationship to work, you have to realize that things are going to change. And if you do not prepare for those things to happen, if you do not have faith enough to believe that no matter what storm comes knocking at my door that I'm going to be able to stand because I got faith that I already invested into, you know, the times that I need to invest it into to make this thing work. I already have a plan and the plan is to move with the word of God. No matter what switches up, no matter what happens, we have enough to where we are prepared. We have enough to where we can trust God in the process for the process. We can trust the process because we're prepared. But if you are not prepared, you cannot trust the process. Because if you're not prepared, when that situation comes up, it's all going to fall. Or if you're not prepared when it comes up, the person's going to say, well, I'm not ready for this year. I can't trust this year. I'm in disbelief. I don't believe it. And so you don't need anybody like that. You, God wants you to have somebody that has faith. That no matter what comes up, we have enough faith in God that he's going to allow us to stand. So even if everything falls apart, we trust the same God to put it all back together. And sometimes we have to go back and re-examine we have to re-examine what we are actually built on because if we're not built on a foundation of hope, of faith, of love, of the fruits of the spirit, of what the Lord is saying, of the obedience, then it's not going to, it's not going to last. It's not going to happen, right? So we can't just do what we want to do. God doesn't just want us to hear what he said. He wants us to do what he's asking us to do. He doesn't want us to quickly forget that now that when the storm has come or now that when situations has, have come up, you notice that it's some people who ghost you. You know, they gaslight you, right? Sometimes people don't want to take accountability. Sometimes people will only go but so far. And that's the real thing I'm trying to get you to understand on today, that if you... Mm. Do not listen and do what the Lord is asking you to do. You can only go but so far because you can only get to the promise and not see the whole thing through without the obedience. You can only go but so far. So your kingdom spouse is not willing to just go but so far. He's willing to go at this thing like God has already told him to go at it. He's willing to have a life with you and a life that's going to be more abundantly. He's willing to not only just hear what the word of God is saying, he's willing to take action. He's willing to have faith in the midst of it all. He's willing to have the household to be covered. He's willing to withstand that storm because the way he's built, the way his mindset is, I realize that I can't be unstable. I realize that I can't be double-minded. If I'm going to see the whole thing through, then I got to trust the process of what God has given to me because this thing has to be made to last because I can't keep going back and forth and losing. I'm ready to start winning with the Lord. And the only way that I'm going to win with the Lord is if I take the very thing that he's already given to me, which is his word and I apply it to my life and not only just remember remember the scriptures not only to just quote the scriptures but to understand that if I'm gonna make this thing work with God's help that I got to obey that I can't just do whatever it is I want to do or I can't just quickly forget and start making my own moves no I don't want to go all the way to the promise and not be able to get to the other side because I work too hard to get where I am I no longer want to keep on going through the same thing over and over and over. I want to be able to learn because I'm not interested at all in relearning no lessons. I'm interested in obeying what God has told me to do because if I do that, I know that no matter what 
falls down, that I still have something built to where we are going to last. Even if we lose it all, we will not lose one another. We will not lose hope and faith that the same God didn't allow it to take us out. He allowed us to be in a place where even in the end, we're still able to stand. That even though the storm came in, the storm didn't take us out. That even when the storm came in, the storm is not going to allow us to separate. It's not going to allow us to not be able to get married. It's not going to allow us to not be able to get together. Because what we are doing at this moment is we're building into this budget. We're building in to realize that there's going to be some hard times. There's going to be rain. But understand that joy will come. Understand that happiness will come. Sometimes things are going to happen inside of our relationship, inside of our marriage, that we don't have any control over because sometimes we don't feel like doing certain things all the time. Sometimes we don't feel like getting the kids together. We don't feel like cooking and cleaning, right? We don't feel like even, you know, doing things the right way sometimes the way it's supposed to be done. But sometimes you can't go off the way that you feel because I've learned that your feelings will lead you in the wrong path because it's not all about your feelings. You have to push past whatever it is that you feel and you have to obey just like like when we were growing up as children, right? You know what I'm saying? No matter whether we wanted to get things cleaned up or not, we still had to do it or there were consequences. So if you move off your feelings, those consequences could be in a situation to where you cannot regain that marriage. You cannot regain that relationship. You cannot stand and handle the storm when it comes your way because you're not prepared to move past what you feel like or don't feel like doing. So whether you feel like doing it or not, your kingdom spouse already knows that this is something that I have to get done because I want my family to be safe. I want us to make it. I want us to grow. And I know that things are going to get better. And I know that this too shall pass. But the only way it's going to pass is if I obey. But if I focus on what I feel... If I focus on the things that have already happened, if I focus on having my mind in a place to where it's cluttered, I'm not going to be able to lay hold of the promise that God has given to me. So your kingdom spouse is taking this thing so seriously because he wants it to last, because she wants it to last, that she's willing to put in the work, that she's willing to put in the time, that she's willing to put in the effort. Never mind what I feel like and don't feel like doing. I can't always trust what I feel because at the end of the day, if I got to get something done, my feelings have very little to do with it at all because at the end of the day, it still has to be done. God's promises are yes and amen. I understand that you don't want to do this, that, and the third, but there's going to be some things that you're going to have to be willing to give up. And that's the things of doing it your way. That's the things of having it your way. And you cannot look in the mirror and quickly forget the word of God like that. God wants to be able to trust you to not just hear, but to do. Let's go to the next scripture that he gave to me. So it tells us over in the book of Luke 11 and verse 28. So Jesus replied, it is the people who hear God's message who are happy. It is the people who hear God's message who are happy. They are happy if they obey it. So if I hear God's message and I obey God's message, I am going to be happy. So God allowed this restoration to come back around so that you can re-examine, right? And you can build in faith. You can build in faith because we, we've already seen what that last foundation was built on. And we know that wasn't built to last, right? We saw all the mistakes. We knew that the sin came in. We knew that, you know, we did wrong. We knew that things were not right. So now we have to take the time to re-examine so that we can build correctly. And it takes both of you willing to do that. And your kingdom spouse is willing to do that with you. Who am I talking to on today? You want to build in faith. You want to build the way God allows you and tells you to build because that's the only way that it's going to work. And we know 
that the only way to build the right way is to build in obedience. And by building in obedience, I'm not just hearing it, but I'm hearing it and I'm doing it. God is looking for people who's ready to take action. Are you ready to take action because you are prepared? Amen. Let's go to the throne of grace. Spirit of the living God, we come to you as humble as we know how, God. We just pause to tell you that we thank you and that we love you. God, I ask right now, Father God, that you begin to silence the voice of every single Goliath that's speaking negative. God, I ask right now, God, that you import your love. Father God, you import your fruits of the Spirit on the inside of us. God, you import your obedience on the inside of us, Father God. God, help us, Lord God, to build in such a way that we don't build the way we used to build because we don't want to miss the wisdom and what you're trying to show us today, Father God. God, help us, Lord God, to not live in the past, but to help us to re-examine, Father God, every single thing that we've done wrong and build it the way you want us to build it, God. And that's the, the building off of the obedience that you've already allowed us to know that we need to have. God, you told us that if we obey your message, Father God, and if we hear your message, that that will make us happy. And God, you want us to be happy on purpose. That's why you left your instructions down here for us to be able to have it so that we can be able to have the life and life more abundantly so that we can be able to lay hold of the promise that no matter what storm comes up to take us out we're already prepared thank you for preparing us right now in jesus name we pray amen 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 so don't forget to send me a prayer request over with pray with Tay Janice at gmail.com. It'll be in the description box below. And thank you everybody for, you know, sowing into the ministry. Amen. Amen. Give and it will be given back unto you. Amen. Give into the ministry that God has allowed you to be able to be in and be a part of. Amen. I bless the Lord for you. I pray over every single seed that's given that it will be returned back to you. Amen. Filled, pressed down, shaken together and run it over. Amen. Shalom in the Lord, meaning peace in the Lord. Amen. I'll see you in the next video.